What is going on guys? Thank you for joining me. Welcome back to the weekly football manager show. I am Paul and I am back. It's the 5th of the 5th, 2016 and we have a store, a treat in store, a store in treat for you tonight. Brilliant. Start how we mean to go on. Um, <laughs> you can hear him laughing. It's not Colin. It's not. It's somebody else. else. Wow. Wow. It's, <laughs> we'll leave this in because it's quite amusing watching me attempt to speak English. Um, good evening, Mr. Dare FM, also known as Matthias. How are you? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? Well, I thought I was doing well. Then I attempted to speak. Um, and it, it seems that this evening speaking is beyond me. So <laughs> let's see how this goes. Um, but yeah, you've come on to deputized for Colin this evening, so hopefully you are raring to go. Yeah, I don't mind being the token American. <laughs> we needed one. Um, and we've replaced Ryan as well. Some That's people say it's a step up. Um, yes, everyone would say it was a step up. Some people will say, God, he's back again. The guy who can't keep quiet knows interrupts. Wow. Hello, Jay. How are you? Wow. That's just rudeness. I'm sorry. Are you okay? I'm not. No, not I was. You were. No, no, no you're, you're, you're busy at the minute. We're going to bring this up straight away. You're busy working on um, the online league for FM Central. It is coming back, and you are in charge of it. It seems. Yeah. It's because Ryan's not here, and all the other admins left. So yeah. Brilliant. I am. So how's <laughs> how's it going? Sell it for us. Um. Well, what do you want me to sell? Uh, nearly ready to go. Um, the first window starts tomorrow night, in which we have our first draft. Um, our waiting list is always needing people who are going to respond to messages who actively want to join when we have vacancies, because at the minute we end up messaging people, there's no responses, so if anyone wants to join, it is a fantastic time to join, because despite the fact you're joined 27th of the waiting list, you're probably the only person that replies to our messages. So. That's right, guys. I replaced Ryan with somebody who sounds almost as freaking miserable. Wow. <laughs> right, Jay, we're going to try this again, right? What we're going to do so is... So offended. I want you to sell it. Make it sound like it's going to be fun. Go. Basically, if you get in lucky and you get into the green division, you get to smash Paul because Paul is awful. Like Yes, I found out I'm actually still playing in this. Being able to beat him just boost your confidence so high and that is just amazing fun because I'm still holding the fact over him that I beat him 3-0 in the cup basically what Jay's going around telling people is he's beaten actual football manager have you ever beaten me on football manager? I don't think so nah I don't, I don't nah. think so how Let's drafts go. always end with you destroying me that, that first draft we did was amazing what was it 4-5-1 one, 6-1 one maybe? It was fun. It was definitely fun. Nathan yeah. Redmond on draft mode, I think, is the best oh, the best just, player we've ever seen. He was in such beast mode. He, he was, was in really beast mode. There we go. Beast mode. See? How, how's this for random chatter this evening, guys? You don't get this on the Deep Line podcast, do you? No, because I actually have a bit more structure. They actually probably have some structure. But are you ready? I'm going to show some... We're going to go to a structured talk now. We're going to discuss our current save. So now, first off, we're going to go to Matthias. Now, obviously, his series is on YouTube and yes. on his website, so he needs to obviously be careful what he says. But fill us in. How's it going? How are your journeys going at the minute? Well, I'm trying to remember, okay, how far have I recorded? I know I already scheduled the uploads. Yes, I learned how to schedule uploads on YouTube uh, for Monday and Tuesday of next week. So not to give too much away, it's going really, really well. Um, with, I'm um, you know, not going to give too much away, but with uh, Austria Wien made it to the Europa League group stage. And my goal is to not play against Leicester. And thankfully, we are not going to play against Leicester in the Europa League again. But I am going to play against Dortmund. So that's going to be very, very interesting. But it's going well. I mean, undefeated so far in the league with them. And uh, last season, it was kind of eh. But I always kind of find that my I have the sophomore slump in my second season at a club where it takes a while after a good first season to get going in the second season. And uh, on my German journey season, I'm still with Hank right now, at least uh, on the channel. A uh, little teaser. Hashtag spoiler. And, yeah. <laughs> um, and things are going well. I mean, we're in the cup final. We're competing for the league title. So I actually could do the domestic treble in my second season with Hank. 
Do it. Do it. If oh, you do it, will you dedicate it to me? I will. The problem is all those episodes have already been recorded, so... Well, let's, let's just hope you already thought about that, then. <laughs> you, you live the dream, just Paul. Live the dream. Random dedication. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so, are you enjoying it? That's the main thing. I am. I am. I took a little... That I had that little, I guess, slump everybody has at some point from FM Overload and kind of pushed through that, and uh, things have been going well. I'm really enjoying it, developing some players, especially, you know, see how far I can take Austria-Vienna. And then on the journey, I've never done, like, a journeyman series or a simulation of a football manager career. It's always been, like, with one club, see how far you can get, kind of what most people do. And so it's a new, interesting facet. I actually... I'm trying to simulate it as close as possible, so if I'm going to switch a club, I will actually take a look at the wages offered. Uh, that that will be a partial deciding factor because in reality, if someone offers you, you know, eight times your salary, you're gonna go, no matter who it is, almost. Whoa, hey, whoa! I love you. Know I'm dedicated to my club, but eight okay. times my salary, and we will talk. <laughs> okay. Are you even getting paid? I am getting paid. Oh, wow. Okay. So if I give you 20 pounds, you'll come coach my team. God, no. I get paid a lot more than that. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, yes. I'm, See, not going to go into, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but my wage is pretty much almost a full-time wage in England. Oh, yeah. Hashtag. So you've got deal with it. Oh, well, you play it. You, uh, but, but you're in Norway where, like, a bread loaf is $100. So, okay. <laughs> uh, bear in mind, a loaf of bread is like 60 pence in English money. What's that? Less than a dollar in American, is it? Uh, it's a little over a dollar. Is it? Yeah. Well, yeah, but you can get a loaf of bread for that, which is, like, freshly baked on the morning. I know, but. You know, you want to get a little Suzuki car, you're going to pay $100,000 for it. So. I've just paid, um, like, what, 10 grand in English money, actually, for my car, which I bought last last week. So, okay, quit yeah. arguing the point. Norway's expensive. Shut up. <laughs> See, again, you don't get this on the Deep Line podcast. We've now moved on to car talk and finances. <laughs> and again, by the way, we do. I am good friends with Ed on Deep Line Podcast, and I speak to George as well, so please don't come back and go, oh, they've been abusing you on the FM Central show. Hashtag no, deal but with it. In all reality, I, know I have been enjoying it, and um, it's, it's it's an cool. interesting way to play the game, to kind of look at it if I were a manager and I'm looking at my career, how yeah. to look at it. You know, it's a little, I mean, little think, something different for me. I think for FM 17, I would actually like to, because I obviously really enjoy your channel, um, I would really like to see you do something where you started in the lowest level of a German-speaking nation, but like the the worst nation of it, if that makes sense. So like, I don't know, like the Belgian lowest tier for a club on the border, for example. And, and they're, not, but they're not German-speaking. But some places in, Germ- in Belgium speak German. And they speak of Flemish, it's Dutch, essentially. Ugh, sorry. I could do wow. Licht, I could do Liechtenstein, but they, they, do they have a league structure? I don't know if they do. I know Vaduz plays in Switzerland. So. Yeah, that's the problem. You see, that's what are the nations are there? Let's let's go through them. So you could maybe get like a low league Austria database. Uh, Austria, could... Switzerland, or Germany is pretty much it. Yeah. So you could get like a low league Switzerland database, for example, and then kind of work your way to the top level of German football, that type of thing, for like a manager career. Yeah. That'd be quite fun to see. You try that. Um, yeah, let's move on to Jay. Jay, how's your saves going at the minute? Why? What are you into at the minute? What am I into? Uh, wow. Now you're asking. Um, I actually haven't had time because any time I've been able to load up um, FM, I've either done the online league stuff, or I've been playing in the clan game that I do on Wednesdays and Sundays. Tell us about that then. You want to know about that? Cool. Yeah, sure. I've been amazing. There we go. <laughs> I'm actually not. I'm like I've got uh, basically a Premier League quality team in the Championship. I've got players oh. like Javier Pastore, Kevin Trapp, Aosi Perez, and I'm fourth. I'm not even like winning the league. Um, so what is this clan game? I mean, for people who don't have a clue, what is like basically, me? Basically, it's a big network game. There is ten of us at the minute. And every night we and every Wednesday and Sunday night we play from about half seven 
to depending on when games fall, normally about half eleven at night. So it's just okay. basically just like an offline save, but with ten or eleven people in the game as well. Okay, that sounds fun. Just about sums it up quite well, actually. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, that sounds fun. Shame you haven't had much time to play your your other says like the Bristol Rovers, for example. Yeah, I've not really got onto that much. I advanced a couple of weeks and bought in some new youth players. I think I sent one to you a couple of days ago now. And that's a, were... that's a screenshot, by the way, not an actual player. Yeah, you'd have been you'd have been loving this player if I sent him to you. He, he probably would have slotted in my FC now the Manchester team well. Probably, to be fair, he was a world-class player. He scored eight goals for France in the 21s. That's the reason they probably caught my attention. Now, you actually did something quite funny, um, Jim, one of, your, one of your saves, where you signed a player just because his name sounded like something else. Yes. <laughs> but this was... What was this? This, is, this was actually on my Bristol Rovers save. There's two of these, actually, I signed recently because of their names. His name was um, Lukaku, and it reminded me of Lukaku. So, so he know, signed him. He's worth four hundred grand. So Mateus, don't you wish you wish you had four hundred grand just to buy someone because his name sounded like somebody good? <laughs> <laughs> the best thing was Lukaku's a goalkeeper. Oh, it's just like oh, his name sounds cool. I'll sign him. Well, I mean, let's move on to myself, and people are going to be shocked. FC United Manchester creating a legacy is back Monday evening, 8 o'clock. Season 15, episode 1 will be entering the YouTube channel. I am excited to have it back. And um, we're a few games in. I think I'm about 10 games into the season now um, of season 15. So I've finally had time to get playing it. I'm really enjoying it. Superb to be back. Um, loading it up and just getting to know the players again, just kind of looking through my squad and remembering why I fell in love with this save in the first place. I mean, an update on Bram Ellison. He is now up to 575 career appearances for me. Um, and that is just insane. 516 in, in the league alone. Um, and then you have Lee Simpson, who people will remember as well um, he has now just passed 400 league appearances 401 um, I think it's just crazy I have this these players and then you've got James Reid in defence midfield who's now on 440 league appearances I think he's coming up to 500 in total um, it's just insane to know that I've got this many players who have played that many times for my club I mean Billy Waiters who people remember I signed in 2020 He's now played 317 times for me. What season are you in now? I'm in 2029-2030. Oh, no, you're catching up to me. Jeez. Um, I mean, I've got it open now in front of me. Now. I mean, I can go through just quickly because a lot of people have followed and really do appreciate the views. I mean, you go through Reese, my goalkeeper at the minute, 289 appearances for the club. All of these are just league appearances because obviously in the career stats it doesn't keep a full record. I'd have to go through with a calculator for that. Is that just for your team then? Because I've been yeah, that's a, no, no, that's just for me. In in um in total, Reese has made two hundred ninety nine. So he made ten for another team before he come to me. Well, I'm now gonna look at my Bristol Rovers because I'm really curious now. Um, then you have Sheev in my left back, who's made two hundred seventy seven appearances for me. Sibson of four hundred one. Um, John um. Possesson at 125, Billy Waiters at 317. Um, I'm just going through some who haven't made as many, so I'll get through them. You've got Ian Burton, who I almost sold, he's made 133 now. Bram Ellison at 518 league appearances, 575 full appearances. It's just crazy. It is honestly crazy, some of the... The amount of appearances some people have made for me is just insane to look at. Palmerson, Palmerson's 23 now. I signed him in 2024, so he's been with us six years. He's played 167 times. Where do you find that out? Where do you find all this? Well, the, this record is just on my um, on my profile screen in the bottom right. I have my career stats. All right. Um, then you have the likes of, oh, I'm back to Reese there, but it's just insane, Mateus, when you, you manage to have so many players. I mean, what, it's one, you've got Reese, Palmerson, Sheevan, Ellison, Reed, 
Billy Waiters, uh, John Simpson and Burton all have got over 100 appearances. Three of them have got over 400, one of them over 500. It's just insane. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I've never stuck with an FM save long enough to get those kind of stats. I mean, I'm genuinely curious how many some of these players are going to actually rack up before retirement. Um, the likes of Ellison. He does want to, after I got relegated from the championship, he wants to leave. Um, but that was a year and a half ago now. He's still sticking around. And he has five positives. One of them is um, happy to see the club performing well in the league. So I really do hope that in time he's going to say, do you know what, I'll stick around actually. Um, especially because his favourite clubs is FC United. Favourite personnel is me. Um, he's the captain. He's been with us for, what, 15 seasons now. So he came through the recruitment in season one. Um, it's just insane and it, I, I'm proud of the fact of how long I've been going at it and I've slowly built something I've not just edited my way to the top um, Jay are, are you are you ready to spill some beans or are you just checking it and I can talk about a, an idea you've got um, no Feel free. I'm, I'm ready and listening go on then let us let, let us know some of your players some other um, I've got uh, the best I think I'm going to have is Alvin Duper. And he's only made 340. But then again. Still all right. Alex Bell, 406. Nice. Uh, I don't Decent think... record. <laughs> the Kunku. How many? How many? <laughs> I don't think he's even played for me yet. I've sent him straight out on loan. Harsh. Yeah, he Poor went to Fleetwood on loan to the end of 2032. Okay. Um, Daniel Mullen. That's something gone wrong there. Apparently he's only made... Oh, he's only 20. I thought I'd have him a bit longer than that. He's only twenty years old. That explains so much. Do, yeah, do you me. have the Do you have that Matthias, where you have a player who feels like he's been in your club forever, and it turns out he's been there for like a year? Yeah, I had that uh, in my Stuttgart series with Timo Vanna because when you start off, he's like eighteen. Okay. And you know, four or five seasons in, you look at him, he's like, oh, he's twenty three. 22 <laughs> he actually can still develop for like another eight years so on <laughs> occasion like, oh. if, if you get a player like that that's that good at that young of an age it totally throws you at times yeah definitely well i've got the daniel mother i just mentioned he's been with me since 2026 and i'm now in 2031 so he's been at the club for five years and he's only 20 still yeah it's like let me click on ages now like your Alex McLaughlin, one of my strikers, he joined me four years ago. He's only played five times for the club. And he's still only 19, though, and I kind of keep forgetting he's only 19. Yeah. Um, D- Damien Johnson, the same. I signed him from Ireland five years ago. He's now 21, and it feels like he's been around for a long time. Matty Kerr, he came to me in 2025. He's played 26 times. He's only 22. I still... This squad is so good, I genuinely feel like I'm letting us down to still win in League One. Um, but we're going to move on. I've got, I've got an idea I wanted to put across. and this You guys have not heard this idea, so I genuinely, I genuinely want you guys to say, that is crap or that is good. Um, and same with peop, people listening. I want to know if this idea could take off. Now, you see people, Matthias and Jay, who they link... FIFA with Football Manager, you know, like they'll play a match on FIFA and if they lose, you've got to sell a play on Football Manager, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Now, my plan was a YouTube series, not not a long one and not a daily one. Um, and what I would do is I would build five, vi- five or six villages on city skylines, right? All centred around a football stadium in each village. Now, as them teams do well in Football Manager... The village can expand, and before each game starts on Football Manager, there's like a you kind of walk to the stadium from a house on City Skylines, and it kind of fades into the match kicking off. So it kind of gives a bit of a a pre-game walk to the ground feel once the stage once the stuff's built. Hmm. Does that make sense for like a kind of a warm up to each episode of a match? You kind of walk to the stadium. Through like yeah, it'd be a, a fun, a village. It'd be a, definitely a different type of intro. I think it'd be, it adds some flavor to it. I was just trying to think the best way to kind of 
bring it together. So let's say the team, because I could set it in the Welsh division, for example, because they all have small stadiums, so I can build like small, small villages on a map. Then, as the team does well and they expand the stadium, the sit the town gets expanded. And you go walk a bit further to get to the stadium. There's more people there, so it kind of adds to the environment. And it kind of instead of just going right, we're here to play this match. You've got to say, right, let's get to the ground, and you start off in a house, and you've got to walk to the ground, and then you get there. It sounds like the most random thing, but I just thought of it today, and I thought, I wonder if people would actually watch something like that. Jay? Give it a go and see. I like. I think the idea in principle could look quite good, but I'd, just... I'd like to see what it looks like first. Yeah. Because it could look completely weird and out of place. Yeah, it could look I think like, if what you are you doing? If you spend time and do it right, I think it could look quite good. I'll see what I can do. See what I can do. But we're going to move on. We're going to move on to... What we're going to call this section is... Are you, it would be really cool to have like a really interesting like beat into a section or like a music beat. But bum, it's, it's not going to happen. Bum, 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 bum. Right, go. It's not EastEnders, Jay. Oh, that, that that's fine. It's not copyrighted. Okay. I'm sure it's not. <laughs> if you want to sue us, remember the... At FM underscore Yank... Um, remember to like and subscribe before you abuse him. <laughs> um, so, I want to ask, what tactics are you using at the minute? Not what tactics do you normally play or how do you normally play. What is your current tactic, Matthias? If you loaded a football, if you clicked load last game, what tactic would be getting used on there right now? Well, if I hit load last game, it was with uh, Austria Vienna, so that would be strikerless. Um, a narrow four three three. The narrow four three three. Yeah. And how's it? How's it work? How do you implement that? Do you get players out wide? Do you keep it narrow? Do you play through the middle? Um. Well, I mean, the the general instructions. I don't. You know, I don't really. You know, I look for overlap simply because I've the only width I have are from two complete win backs. So, you know, I need the central guys to also look out wide because I. Uh, you know, I keep the central areas so compact. I, I draw so many opposition players in there. The wings are completely wide open every time I move forward. So you have to look for overlap to create that width. Um, but other than that, I don't really give guidelines as to, you know, play through the middle or play, you know, exploit this flank. Unless I obviously, during the match, watching, see that there's a weakness and say I play a 4-4-2 and they're spread out wide. Well, then I exploit the middle because... You know, where they're going to have two people in central areas at a given time, I'll have, like, six. So, I guess, uh, um, and it, it, is it something you, you're developing all the time, or is it a tactic you're actually happy with now? No, I'm happy. Um, you know, I first season was good. It was very good. Second season, I used it. I tinkered a little bit too much. Um and now for the third season, literally the only difference I have between first and third season is I moved the uh, defensive line up from normal to slightly higher to put more pressure on the opposition. And it's uh, definitely paid off so far. So that's if I hit load last game, that's the tactic you would see. Fantastic. And Jay, you click that load last game button and what tactic are you using? Uh, the same tactic I've been using for... Like the entirety of last season with Bristol Rovers, probably. Um, that's my four-two-two-two, two, two, two. No, that's enough twos. That's um, twos. Yes, yeah, three twos. It's three lots of two. Um, basically, I play it with inside forward. So I have a ball winning midfield, ball winning midfielder, sort of playing like almost like a Bradley Johnson sort of role. Uh, and you do know most of the world has no idea who he is. That was, well, a, sorry, the name that was a nasty joke. They'd be even more confused if I used the name of my region. Well, do you mean like a John Joe Shelby role? No, because John Joe Shelby is awful. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> right, come on then, continue the task. I'm not John Joe Shelby, I'm saying John Joe Shelby. Brilliant. Well, I've got to wind a Norwich player up. Norwich fan up. <laughs> I'm a Norwich player? Well, you wish. No, you uh, better than half team. That's not hard. Go on, carry on. Wow, that's just no, that's just too far. Uh, uh, I'll, 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 I'll go then. Then I do the same as I do for every single tactic I think I've ever played on Football Manager. I always play with a poacher. 
I've noticed you're a big fan of Poacher. Yeah, I always play with it. I've never not played with a Poacher. Not yet, anyway. I don't think I haven't. But at the minute, I normally play... At the minute, when I play two up front, like I do at the minute, I've got a defensive forward, and I've got, obviously, the Poacher up front, who's just sort of one who can tap in the goals. I've got a young German lad who's doing it at the minute. Just taken over from a, an old player who's just fading into nothingness. <laughs> fading into nothingness. Well, I think um, the tactic I'm going with it's the FC United Manchester attacking tactic. Um, I used it last season, and we had a very, very average mid-table finish. But I kind of stuck at it because I wanted to move away from the five and five, um, just to kind of mix things up. So I stuck at this tactic all last season as we were struggling with it, and this season it's really took effect. We're a lot more solid. I play a flat back four, but both centre backs are on cover. So they drop in deeper, and my defensive midfielder is on defensive. So he he drops into the normal defensive line. The two centre backs are deeper than that, which forms a nice um, triangle shape. Then I have Ellison in the middle, playing on his own, slightly to the right. And the reason behind that is the attacker midfielder is slightly to the left, playing as a shadow striker with a poacher up front, just for you. Um, my right winger is set to attack, my left winger is set to support because he's playing next to the shadow striker so I want him to drop off a little bit so he's not um, running into the shadow striker too much. So it's like a 4-1-1-3-1, one, one, one. Um, quite attacking um, and it, it works really well. Um, we definitely looking a lot more solid this season, I don't want to give too much away but uh, we've lost one game in the first 10 which doesn't give much away so... That's all right. I can I can say that. That's not a spoiler. Do, do not worry. Don't worry, Matthias. It's not a spoiler. Um, but yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy to have developed a more of an attacking tactic. I'm happy it's starting to, to take effect. It's starting to work. We're starting to look like a a good football inside again, which is nice because with the five and five, that's what it always offered was um really solid football. But also we looked like a good team. We had high possession, high pass completion. Um, high shot percentage in terms of on target, so it's nice that this tactic is now developing that as well. Um, the next step I want to go on to is scouting. That's because somebody actually on a stream I did earlier today mentioned it. Um, and I just want to talk about how do we do scouting for the teams we are currently. So I want to go to you first, Jay. And I just want to ask, when you're at Bristol Rovers, are you just a worldwide scouter? Do you use the, the world option at the top and do region hunting how do you go about scouting well if you look through my scouting i very rarely sent my scouts out i'm not really sure why i have a scouting team because i tend to do it all myself like okay i only have them to expand the players that appear in my search and but do you have statistics do you have stuff. attribute mas masking off then uh i think so i'm not 100 sure Jeez. i set this save up in November, don't expect me to remember. <laughs> this is seven months ago. We're talking now. I don't know how to view it now. I don't know. Uh, just click on a random not play yeah, from a I random nation. Yeah, I have it off. Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, well, I didn't notice. <laughs> you didn't notice how easy it was to see if a player's good or not. Well, I'm not making. I'm, I've got good tell. Unbelievable. We're going to move on to Matthias because Jay's scouting now means nothing to me as soon as he cheats. Please don't tell me you have it off as well, Matthias. I didn't even know you could do that. So you have to scout players? Yes, I have to, Brilliant. and I am very, I very active in doing that. Thank oh, you. Is that right. masking being a thing? Yeah, I don't know, as, so as long as I remember. Like, I know it exists after I set up the save, but like before this... I think it's as long as I remember because I I remember when I was like a lot younger I used to have it off, but then when I started to always want to you know I like do the the challenge aspect. Yeah. Um, I remember coming across it on the the load up screen and just it's just something I always have because I just I don't think I would like the the aspect of um going to South Africa or or South America or Asia and just clicking on a player and going oh he's good. I like the fact of scouting them for three months, still seeing like three half months. Of I had sent them oh, out no. there and I was, three what, months. What I, three. Yeah, what I like to do is um, okay, I'll go on to me for a second before we do you, Matthias. Just so I can explain the three months. Okay. 
Well, we... What I like to do is I like to scout them um, for the first month, which I find you can get all the attributes. Three months. You... Listen, oh. Jay. <laughs> so you get the attribute masking. Um, sorry, you get all the stats, and you can get at the report in terms of if they're selfish, in terms of if they, if they handle pressure well, etc. Then what I like to do is use the, the remaining scouting time to see how their match performances are. So I will then go into watching them over like two month period in every game to see are they averaging eighty plus pass percentage, are they averaging eighty plus heading percentage. And um, that's what I'm doing with the FC United of Manchester one now in extreme detail in terms of every signing has to go through a rigorous scouting plan. Um I have seem to skim over that in, in stuff like my streams and it the streams seem to be failing so I really do need to just kind of go a lot more detailed back to how I enjoy playing which is just nerdy to the max. Mm. So that explains why I do three months because I like to match scout them for many, many games. Yeah, but okay. three months? Jeez. Yeah, it's a nice length Jeez. of time to see exactly if somebody's going to be worth signing. I'd hate to, spend... to be a scout working for you. For, hey, if I'm going go to, be go to Kazakhstan 50... <laughs> for three months and look at this 18-year-old and let me know if he's worth anything. Come back three say months. Hi, like... I'll say hi to the family for you. Come back, <laughs> come back three months later. No, he was all right, I guess. Well, what's <laughs> funny is um, <laughs> Almaty, Almaty is beautiful in November. <laughs> well, what I can say is um, at the end of August in season 15, I have signed... Not loan deals. I have signed nobody. And I scouted well over 150 people from January till August. I end up doing um, at least that. I've just... Nobody nobody passed the inspection of being better than the players I currently have. Do you have so, like a tick list when you sign players then? To an extent, in terms of the, the basic... They have to handle pressure. They have to be good determination. They have to work hard, good teamwork. <laughs> then it goes on to... Are they, as a fullback, covering more distance per game than my current fullback? Are they, as a defensive midfielder, winning more headers than my current defensive midfielder? Are they, as a midfielder, passing more percentage and more passes per game than my current centre midfielder? Then it goes into my youth team in terms of are they doing better than my best youth player? Because if not, then it makes more sense to promote my best youth player and give him a chance. Uh, so save money, I guess. But that's literally on the save which I can sit offline and do it with. Um, people who watch my streams don't get to see that. And I would like to ask if, if I continue to stream because I, I'm on the edge with it at the minute because it's I'm just not really into it at the minute. Would people want to see that kind of thing, in terms of me going to players and checking them percentages, then going back to my team, or do people prefer the space continue to play the match? continue to play the match. What do people prefer if you watch a stream, Jay, for example? What would you want to see? I would imagine... I like the in-depth part of it, but I imagine the common viewer would probably be more interested in just seeing how you get on with matches. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. What about yourself, Matthias? Uh, <clears throat> well, I play the, the game very detailed. You know, I mean, I never play on key highlights. Do extended is the lowest I go. Usually I play comprehensive. So I like the detail. And I find that, uh, you know, a lot of comments that at least I get on my channel are, hey, we like how detail-oriented are, how much you show tactics and all that, where other people are just flash, boom, bang, game, and move on. Yeah. Um, so I, I, you know, I nerd out on the detail of it. If you can call it nerding out, it's still football. There's nothing nerdy about football. Um, I'm just so I... I, I like that because that's also how I play. Okay, I don't scout for three months because, you that's know, exactly. that's not. I, I want my scouts to like me and actually come <laughs> back to work for me, <laughs> and not go here, here go to Indonesia. You know, <laughs> it's lovely. It's, trust me, trust me. Um, one of my one of my scouts has just been in Belarus for probably about a year. <laughs> so uh, I think he's probably bought a house out there now. Yeah, probably has a second family. Yeah. Um, so I'd like it, but again, you know, I'm with Jay in the sense of there are, I think, a lot of people who go onto streams um, just want to see the gameplay, quote-unquote, even though that's obviously part of the gameplay, but more like just the matches. 
yeah, yeah. and you know that kind of stuff. I might attempt to stream where I, I've massively nerd out detail and just see if people are commenting saying, "Come on, hurry up!" Or if they're coming and saying, "This is interesting." I'd not. Be cu- well, it'll be curious to see. Um, a bet on you get when's the next match? Come on, I want to see the next match. Yeah, come on, let me watch you lose. Um, Pretty much. So, Mat- Matthias, I wonder, how, can you go into detail? Then, how how do you handle the scouting? Then, if you if you're not a three month guy. Uh, well, it really depends. Uh, I mean, first of all, obviously, I'd narrow down what I'm looking for, kind of, you know, age bracket, position, all that kind of stuff, different positions. I go in, check out the player. Obviously, I have the attributes masked. If it's within my scouting range, you know, you get to see a lot, but you get a range. You don't pinpoint a lot of things. So if it's from the range I'm looking at, it kind of looks like this could be the right guy. You know, obviously, if I'm seeing his determination is at max a six, I'm not even going to bother. Honestly, yeah. everything else could be 20s. I'm not even going to bother with that. Uh, but if it's kind of in the range that I like, uh, obviously, I, you know, put him on the, the short list. And then I have a scout, depending on if I've got 40, 40% or more knowledge already of the player, I'll send him out for two weeks, Paul. And yeah, within those two weeks. two weeks, I get a 100% scout report back. Yeah. Uh, now, obviously, you don't get a lot of matches, but if this is if if this isn't like trying to a short term stopgap fill, which can sometimes happen, happened with me at Kank, where the board sold like three of my really good players, and I needed to replace them fast. And I, I'll admit, I you know, I I picked some good players and got lucky with them over the course of the season because you never know because they have to be young and all this stuff. But then if I'm doing this more like two or three or four months in advance of a transfer window, say January window is over, and I'm now scouting for the next season, I'll leave them on the short list because uh, the length of period of time on the short list, you already get all their match stats. You don't have to continue scouting them. You just have to leave them on your short list. If you remove them off the short list, you lose all that stat information in terms of their form and so on. If you leave them on your short list, you get the form information, you get more detailed stats, and I can send my scouts out to to do that, um, to look at other players. Now, if I'm looking in regions that I'm not familiar with or I'm looking for regions, yeah, I hit world, transfers, uh, youth intake, and then go through that, usually in detail myself, and then just highlight players from clubs that I like, that I, that I know can produce talent, have short scout reports, and if then I like, then I send guys out for a month, because usually these are now, we're talking, you know, if it's South America or something like that, or Africa, you get maybe 10% back, and you need to send them out for a month to six weeks to get a 100% picture of them. Yeah. I think it's interesting, hopefully people will look at all the different methods and let us know what you do to scout people just comment in the below or leave leave a review if you're watching on soundcloud for example and um, comment there and let us know exactly what you do when you're scouting let us know if you found any gems from obscure nations as well it's always nice to know if you found a, a future world star from indonesia Ooh, I did. or malaysia i, 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 Go I gotta throw it. one in there i gotta throw yeah. one in there okay because he's a hero and i gotta See what I can do with him if I leave Henk. Brought him to Henk in my second season there. Thomas Mikaze. Brought him in. He was 17. He turned then 18 from uh, Dinamo Tbilisi out of Georgia. Yeah. Absolute superstar stud player. He only featured like a half a season, scored 10 goals in the league. Absolutely awesome. Awesome. Um, Bald-headed, perfect at 18. I've Shaved. got to remind you that there's already some legends from Georgia like Tamiri Ketspire. Yeah, I know, but anymore, you don't get a lot of great Georgian players anymore. It's not the, the world first players we think of, no. No, and, yeah, and there are they're, they're, in the 90s, yeah, yeah. but now yeah. you'd be hard pressed to ask even good, I mean, detailed football fans to say, name three players from Georgia. Because <laughs> honestly, if you would ask me right now, I'm I trying to think, be um, able to name one. Is that K- catch catch nish, 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 nish. <laughs> Was he from Georgia? That was you know always going to be amazing. Well, if, it's, it, <laughs> if it's something with Vili at the end, yeah, he'd be from Georgia. I think he was the former. I think he was a Rangers defender as well as a few of the. Yeah, I mean there were a few great ones in the nineties, especially in the nineties. Uh, Freiburg had some really, really good Georgian players. 
Uh, but now you don't really find them. And that's why when I found this one and picked him up for a song, I think I paid 300,000 euros for him. Oh, wow. Uh, and I'm sure the gank board will sell him for like 15 million. You know, kind of <laughs> like the Romanian region I got in for a million. The board sold for like 20 million. Uh, so it, you know, I was really proud of finding someone from Georgia. Romania is like a, a super nation, isn't it, on Football Manager? They seem to just pump out some very, very cheap and very high quality uh, regions. Definitely a nation to go and check out. Jay, do you want to just end tonight's show by talking about your Georgian superstar? Well, I've, I've, he's not mine. I don't own him. But um, he made that, just talking about that made me think, you know what, I'm going to have a look who plays for Georgia. For Georgia. For Georgia. So, um, for Georgia. And I'll just, um, actually, I'll bring it back up because I just said you sent it to you on Facebook. And he's phenomenal. Um, and the minute he plays for Real Madrid, I've, I don't know how I've not heard of this guy. Mainly it's probably because my team doesn't do well in Europe. Uh, so we've never actually played him. But he looks amazing. He's got 20 finishing, 18 heading. Like, he is probably one of the best strikers in the world in my save. There we go. We've just, um, Matthias has just um, revealed the secret nation to go and scout yeah. for everybody as soon as you. As soon as you stop listening to the podcast, get on to George's squad and just get scouting. I, because I there's some reckon, wonder kids in there. Get in there early. Get in there quick before they join the big clubs. Get yeah, them them in uh, Ajax, Cape Town. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. And, South, and, South Africa, uh, so many gems. Ah, uh, shoot. Uh, of course, the name now escapes me out of Egypt. They have like 10 potential superstars in there. Um... Like Al Ali or shoot, I can't remember their name right now at the top of my name, the top of my head, but uh, some some great, great, great young players in there. Oh, Al Ali, Al Ali, yeah, and then Zamalek. I'm literally Zamalek, but Al Ali has things. a lot better ones. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's funny definitely worth checking. All say English names, let alone foreign names. <laughs> wow, that's all abuse. Abuse the host. But that's it for the show. We've literally just rambled. But people wanted a podcast. We delivered. Granted, it was a ramble, but hey, a ramble is better than no ramble, Jay. <laughs> As you always say, a ramble is better than nothing. There we go. See, it's like a common phrase which I've never said. Well, Matthias, thank you for coming along, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. And we will see you next week where hopefully Ryan and Colin are back and they have some sort of organisation because when it's left to me, this is what happens, people. But until next time, yeah. I won't say don't go changing because I'll have just stole that from Spencer. <laughs>